All right, it is April 12th, and the RTX 4070 review embargo has completely lifted for all the Founders Edition cards and any cards at MSRP. And you can see that your recommended feeds have probably been absolutely freaking flooded. The general consensus is that you get RTX 3080 performance for $100 less than the RTX 3080 was supposed to cost. Now we can never really buy the RTX 3080 at its MSRP of $700. We're saying that we get a 4070, performs about the same. You compare it to its theoretical predecessor, which is the RTX 3070, and you can see the 4070 is on average about 30% faster and it costs 20% more. So you're getting about 10% extra price to performance with the 70 class card from the 4000 series. With the 4070, you get 12 gigabytes of VRAM compared to a 3080, that's pretty nice. You get extra two gigs to work with. You can even see here with Hardware on Boxes review, it seems like 12 gigabytes is going to be the absolute minimum for like higher end performance or even mid range graphics cards in the future. And while on the topic of VRAM, I will quickly just note that 12 gigabytes is now what we can consider to be the bare minimum. So that is to say you shouldn't purchase a graphics card with less than 12 gigabytes, certainly not when spending over $1,200 US. Now even a game like Resident Evil 4 Remake, we can see even though it's on the same engine that it it, that all Resident Evil games have been on for about the past like three, four years, even all the way back to Resident Evil 7. Put up a video by Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. If you're inter interested in his channel, go ahead and check him out. He made a video with a 4090. Now an RTX 4090 has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. This will just go to show how much VRAM a game like this requires. A dedicated amount of like close to like 13 gigabytes of VRAM. Now this is at 4K max settings. Now you don't necessarily need to play at 4K. It goes to show what kind of future games we can expect. Also check out here with Daniel Owen. By the way, congrats to Daniel Owen. He gets review samples now and he had an RTX 4070 at the launch day, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look at this. This is Last of Us Part 1, the PC port of it. This is a 3070. It's having to cap how much VRAM it's using. And then on the 4070, it's able to kind of push it. But honestly, it's even getting close on how much video memory it's using for the 4070. And you can see he just went to, this is only at 1080p at 4K 4070. It's only really just barely getting by. It's allocated allocating close to 12 gigabytes of video memory. You can see here, this is an allocated number, and then this is actually dedicated RAM. It's getting really close. And these two games are out right now. Many are gonna say though, The Last of Us, yeah, it could have used some more optimization. Really, how much longer can we keep pushing optimization? No, it's just gonna get worse. Plus, uh, with the adoption of new, new generation consoles, it's just going to increase. Every new feature right now seems to just demand more. So my major concern with the RTX 4070, even though it's performing quite well at 1440p here, my concern is that it's not going to have enough VRAM to go into the future. And you can see Nvidia already did this with the RTX 3070, and here we are making all these videos complaining about 8 gigabytes isn't enough VRAM anymore. And you can see that Nvidia practically did it again with the 70 class card with the 4000 series, putting the bare minimum into it with all the emerging graphical technologies that are coming to games. Even though in this case here, the 4070 is matching a 6800 XT, which was a $650 graphics card, and the 4070 is a $600 graphics card, but the 6800 XT has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So even this card still might perform better. Again, credit to this graph by Hardware Unboxed. But it starts to make you wonder though, if you wanted to buy an RTX 3080, well, you can't really buy them new anymore. And this just shows that the market manipulation, do you remember way back in like October that everybody was talking about Nvidia was doing? This strategy of pricing all of the new cards that they're offering way above what people could afford. They just had to buy the 30 series to just get anything that is affordable. You know, your only option is to get a 3080 on the used market. It seems like if you do auction prices and stuff like that, you could probably get an RTX 3080 from anywhere to like 500 to $600 and it still performs well, but you are, you know, remember you are missing out on two gigabytes of VRAM if you find that as an issue because it might be an issue, not gonna lie. Plus you're getting some extra features like you're getting AV1 encoding support and you're getting DLSS3 frame generation, which if you find those important, then this could be a great upgrade to you. Not to mention for giving you performance of like an RTX 3080, which I'm gonna have to hide my camera here so you guys can see. And that makes it really impressive that it's only a two slot card and it's not completely oversized. So you can keep your same power supply, you can keep your same case and you won't have to worry about that. That is a huge advantage going into the 4070, especially for people wanting to make the upgrade. 
Not to mention that you don't have to use the 12 volt high power cable that Nvidia is forcing on all these cards. It seems to be that you can get some AIB cards, like I think the one from Gigabyte that some reviewers had, and the Ventus card that some viewers had from MSI didn't have the VHP power connector. They had just a normal 8 pin power connector, which is really, really cool. Especially compared to the RTX 3070 from last generation. I bet you guys are like, well, you're paying $100 more. Why can why couldn't it just also be five hundred dollars like the thirty seventy was? I, I'm gonna argue that I don't think it's really that bad. If you see here, like inflation, as you guys know, has been bad this past year, and a five hundred dollar card back in twenty twenty is now worth about $580, at least in the global scale. You have to remember, Nvidia has these cards at the same price for the next two years. They're, they are future-proofing their price with this. Now, it's very hard to see as a consumer like how inflation is affecting the world. They see the, the much bigger picture than we see. We don't know everything that Nvidia knows right now. They're probably making a smart decision. You can see AMD is doing a similar thing and following in the path of Nvidia right now, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later. A lot of reviews about the RTX 4070, even though it's been the best price to performance that we've seen in this generation so far, have just been kind of like, well, it's meh. I'm pleased with its performance. I'm not blown away by it. I'm not excited by it. Yes, it's good price to performance from what we've seen, but it's not that exciting in the grand scheme of things. And Paul did an awesome chart here in his video where he showed why basically it's not that exciting because typically generation on generation, the 70 class cards are always faster than the 80 class cards. But with this generation here with the 4070 and against the 3080, they're pretty much the same. So that just makes it fundamentally less exciting and less value to the consumer. So I think there is a couple ways if Nvidia wanted to completely knock this card out of the park, that would have been to either price this card at $500 and match the price of the 3070. Ideally, the GeForce RTX 4070 should be a $500 US product, at least in our view. I think if this were a 499 card, it would have been an entirely different conclusion. $500 and we're gonna divide that by 126 and look at that man it would just destroy this chart this price to performance here would be under four dollars and it would absolutely destroy this generation now i don't know if that would be within nvidia's margins to make them a profitable company i did mention that there's two ways that this could have been great not only pricing at 500 dollars, but if you could pick either or keep it at 600 dollars. but what if they gave it 16 gigabytes of vram or just some amount of vram that would just completely future proof it because that would give a major selling point over the rtx 3080 from last generation especially because nvidia has manipulated the market in a way that most of the RTX 3080s that are new out there have already been sold, so I don't really think they have to worry about selling their old stock anymore. But NVIDIA doesn't seem like they want to give you excess VRAM unless you're paying for the absolute top-end cards like the RTX 3080, which only has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's really not that much. Or if you're paying for the 4090, which you sell a kidney and you get 24 gigabytes of VRAM, so you know, have fun with that. Those were the two ways that NVIDIA could have made this a slam dunk. But in the end, it's just kind of a meh card and i really question its viability in the future here with only 12 gigabytes of vram i'm really curious to see too how amd is going to respond to this because all of a sudden there's an actually attractive value card in this market i don't know if amd is just like sitting and just watching this happen or if they really have something planned at this moment because we can see that the 7900 xt from amd has dropped from this 900 dollars msrp all the way down to 800 dollars um because they priced that card really poorly so probably reevaluating their their marketing and their pricing structure at this moment and maybe they're wanting to sell the other cards that they have maybe they're waiting for that or maybe they're waiting for fsr 3.0 which is dlss frame generations competitor maybe they're waiting until they can release that and then they can actually like combo this say oh you could get a 7800 xt and you get frame generation with it as well to compete with nvidia but in order for amd to be competitive with nvidia here probably going to need to offer a card at at least 600 to 650 dollars if it's 70 800 XT, it's probably going to be at least $650 because the past generation 6800 XT was priced at 650 but it would need to beat the 4070 at that price point and have more VRAM. But 
AMD has literally been radio silent ever since they released the 7900 series cards. Overall, the 4070 has been a relatively like pretty good card. And let me know if you guys are buying one. I'm thinking pretty heavily like I want to do a live stream on April 13th just to talk with you guys to see if you are getting this card. I'm curious of what's going on. Like the VRAM is the only thing that scares me into the future. Overall, not a bad value. If you're not playing the latest AAA games that are so graphically demanding, or possibly games that aren't very well optimized with VRAM, then VRAM might not be that big of an issue with you. What do you guys think about the 4070? I'll see you in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.